All right, before we get started on specifics about how to generate your title block inside of Revit, we're going to talk about, you know, just some overall things that you need to consider. Now, when you start your title block process, we're going to go up to the application menu and we're going to create a new title block and you're going to specify whatever size you need. If it's not on this list, I would pick one that's close and modify it um, or you can pick new size. I've already generated one for the size that I'm going to create, which is an E1. And I have made sure that I name this temporary. So let's go ahead and move this to the bottom so we can see a little bit better. But I've named this, you know, my title block and temp because this isn't going to be my final, you know, one that I'm going to take into my project. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import that CAD file. Unfortunately, we cannot link it, so find the CAD file you want and go ahead and bring it in. Make sure that you preserve the colors, and I do this mostly because it makes it easier for me to, you know, differentiate between the information that's in the CAD file versus the information that I have created in the Revit title block. I generally bring in all layers, and for this example, auto detect should be fine, and then center to center. So we'll go ahead and open. It'll take a second to bring it in sometimes. If for some reason you can't see it, you might want to zoom out. It might not have been, you know, positioned properly. Now, when we look at this, you kind of want to do some homework before you get started on this process. You're going to want to pay attention to how you're going to generate this information. For example, I'm going to have filled regions to represent this. Sometimes we can do it as lines. You would create a thick line style, but Revit tends to not clean up real well. Um, more so probably if these were squared corners than round, but as you know, Revit's line ends are always round. So we tend to end up with not the best intersections in cases like this, so a filled region would be a better choice. You're going to have to create or clean up if you're going to bring this in and explode it the filled region names. So I'm going to have a filled region for black that's solid. I'm going to have a filled region for gray in this example that's solid. When I look at this title block, I can also see, you know, in AutoCAD these were attributes. In Revit, since it's something that we want to be able to modify, these are going to be labels or parameters. So for each, you know, different size that we have, you're going to have to have a different label type. So if I look at my create panel and I look at labels, you'll see that it's just saying tag one. I would modify these and be more specific. So if it's Arial quarter inch, that's what I would name this tag. You're going to want to match most like your, your company standards right now. So name them accordingly. And if I'm exploding this, then it'll bring that information in. If I'm just tracing over this, which again is my preferred method, then you're going to probably have to flip back and forth between AutoCAD and Revit or explode it in a different file so that you know what the sizes are and so forth. So you're going to have to create all those different label styles. And the same thing would be true of text. So for example, I don't have to, you know, I, the company name is going to be stock. It's not going to change from project to project. So that would be text. And again, you're going to have to create those different text styles. Same thing is going to be true of lines. So if you look at, again, on the Create panel, and I go to draw a line, that I only have a few types in here. If I need additional types, you're going to want to go into the Manage panel and Object Styles. And then you're going to create your other subcategories. So I might create one that's, you know, border and what I want the pen weight to be. Oops, and I did that under generic. We wanted it under title blocks. So we'll do border and I'll say thick since we don't want two names. And then whatever that pen weight's going to be. Now that's something else you guys want to keep in mind if you have modified your pen settings inside of your template, then you're going to want these to, you know, coordinate with each other. 
So make sure that you create however many different line styles you need. And we'll go ahead and get rid of this one since I didn't need it. Um, and then set it to whatever line style you want and whatever color. And then we can kind of proceed from there. But anything that needs to be you know, recreated in here is going to literally have to be recreated as either a text, a parameter, a filled region type, or a line style. So get familiar with what you want to be able to modify once it's brought into the project so that you know what you have to assign as a parameter versus what can be just text.